Um, the LP is an arts organization that advances artists and neighbors as change agents in their own communities. We do this through our Create Change Artists in Residence and Fellowship programs, as well as creative community building initiatives. Everything we do is meant to make art, build community, and create change. Um, and today we'll be together for about half an hour sharing about our new space um, with an additional 10 minutes afterward um, for any questions you might have. So we invite you to put questions into the um, chat throughout, the, throughout our time together and we'll pick a few at the end um, to, to answer as a group. Um, and we also wanted to say if you come up with any questions or thoughts to share after today, um, there's a form where you can submit those questions um, on our website on that laundromatproject.org slash bedsty page. You can also email us at any time at info at laundromatproject.org. Um, and just a couple housekeeping things. Um, if you would like to select closed captions today, you can do that at the bottom of your Zoom screen. And this meeting is also being uh, recorded. So if you prefer not to be recorded, you can turn your camera off. Um, the recording will just be shared publicly afterwards for people who weren't able to join us live for the open house, but who want, um, who want to engage with this info and learn more. Um, all right, so today you're going to be hearing from a number of LP staff members, including our executive director, Kemi Elisimi, Deputy Director Aisha Williams, our Community Engagement Manager, Siavel Shiko Tenkal, our Programs Fellow, Erica Rawls, Artist Engagement Manager, Lady Sasha Jones, our Development Manager, Amelia Broad, and you'll, be, you'll also be hearing from our architect, Nandini Bagchi. Very exciting. We're pleased to have Nandini with us. Um, and before we get started, just wanted to um, share a land acknowledgement and an excerpt of our intention and accountability statement, um, which you can also read in full on our website. Um, but just to say, LP staff are scattered across the East Coast and actually the country and the world right now. Um, but our new space uh, is in what's now called bed Brooklyn. Um, and we wanted to acknowledge some history around that. So on the screen right now is our same um, uh, image of our home and it's got our land acknowledgement on it, which I'm just gonna read now. As we join the bed neighborhood of central Brooklyn, the Laundromat Project respectfully acknowledges that we are on the occupied and unceded lands of the Canarsie who are part of the Muncie Lenape. We recognize them as the original stewards of this land and pay respects to their elders, past, present, and future. We acknowledge the long-time gentrification and displacement happening within bed and persistent injustices that bed faces around police accountability, food and health access, and education inequities, to name a few. The LP has adopted a critical stance of deep listening to better build trust and feedback loops within our communities, prioritizing impact over intent. We understand that our vision is stronger and our destination is closer when we move with community front and center. And you'll be hearing um, more about our community engagement efforts today. Um, so with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Kemi Elisimi, our executive director. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you so much uh, for that uh, grounding and introduction, Emma, and I'm looking forward to hearing from everyone else on the team, um, as well as those of you who've so kindly uh, joined us on this Monday afternoon. Thanks so much. Um, it, it really is an incredible uh, day for us. It's an emotional day for me. Um, to be here with you today celebrating our 15 years and our first uh, long-term home that brings together all of our uh, dreams of anchoring both our programs and our administrative operations in a single uh, location. Um, 
and allows us to grow our roots even deeper um, in a community that we have uh, been a part of in, in at least a small way for all 15 years that we have been an organization. Um, and while we have worked with artists and neighbors and communities of color all across this beautiful city of ours, um, most intimately in Harlem, in the South Bronx, and, and also in Bed-Stuy, we made the decision as part of a street visioning process that ended a, a, a couple of years ago that we really wanted to anchor in one uh, uh, location. Uh, we'll continue to work citywide, particularly with artists all across the city, so that won't shift. But being able to be embedded and part of a neighborhood uh, felt important and we were able to um, begin this process even in having an office in Harlem and having a space in the South Bronx and went through a really intentional uh, uh, process um, of selecting a neighborhood that would give us a critical mass both of our Create Change artists, our flagship program, as well as uh, all of these incredible neighbors that we've been working with in various ways. Um, over the last 15 years. And that process, which took over a year of listening and talking and thinking and analyzing and following uh, uh, heart and head, led us to bed -Stuy. So after this incredible year of reflecting and learning and listening and reconnecting, we identified a beautiful new home. It's a two-story uh, street-facing storefront at 1476 Fulton and something we discovered in our listening process. Thank you, Ola, for your, for your Facebook post a few couple of months ago, a few months ago, is that this stretch of Fulton Street is also known as Harriet Tubman Avenue. Um, that is the co-name. Um, so it just felt like an especially wonderful homecoming uh, to be on this freedom trail. I literally spent this weekend um, uh, in Dorchester, Maryland, um, on the former home and, and grounds that Harriet Tubman walked on. Uh, so being able to, to be part of her legacy and her history and have the LP be part of that um, on Harriet Tubman Way uh, slash Fulton Avenue just feels especially uh, beautiful and poignant. Uh, so thank, we look forward to welcoming you to this space. Uh, we could not be more honored and thrilled to be able to be part of the bed -Stuy community, the Central Brooklyn community, and continue to serve them as well as our larger uh, New York City um, community and beyond. So with that, thank you for joining us this afternoon. And I will turn over to our Deputy Director, Aisha Williams, who will give you a little bit more information about this space. And thank you, Kemi, for sharing a bit about our process and path to 1476 Fulton. Um, and while unfortunately we can't walk each of you through physically in the space at the moment, we wanted to give you a little bit of a sneak peek of what you'll actually be seeing when we are able to welcome you and open our doors. Uh, so what you see here um, is not only a picture of George Settles, our board chair, standing in front of the storefront, um, with our Black Lives Matter, uh, Black Life Eternal statement um, that is uh, emblazoned on the storefront windows. Um, you also see the layout of the first floor of our storefront, a uh, creative community hub. Um, and as Kemi mentioned, uh, the space itself is two levels. The top level will actually house our reception area, artist storage space, programming and community gathering space, as well as a work area and a modest backyard uh, where we can gather and entertain and share uh, in community with one another. Um, in addition, there is a ground floor uh, space uh, which will be used as flex area, and flex space. Um, and I should mention that the first floor uh, of uh, the storefront is ADA accessible. Um, and uh, yes, lots of uh, opportunities to gather with community, to welcome community. Um, many things are mobile and accessible and able to bring out into the street uh, and engage with community uh, directly uh, in front of the storefront, uh, passerbys, which we love to do at LP. 
Uh, and I will also share with you a bit of the space. And again, here is Kemi uh, Alesami, our executive director, standing inside of the storefront um, with her hard hat on. Uh, and so you can kind of get a general sense of the interior of the space, um, as well as some animations of the space being fully activated uh, in, in what we hope uh, will be uh, lively gatherings uh, once we do open. And as Emma mentioned um, at the top of the call, we actually were able to obtain Nandini Bash Bashi, sorry, Nandini, um, as our architect uh, for the build out of the space. And Nandini uh, has so generously joined us on this call. And I'm actually gonna turn it to Nandini just to share a little bit about uh, thoughts and inspirations uh, in uh, designing this space for us together. Thank you, Aisha. Um, I'm really excited to be a part of this project. Um, I'm someone who has always advocated for such spaces. Um, I've written about them, so this is in a way a real opportunity I had to work with um, the LP people. Um, starting in the beginning of this year, we had one meeting in person and then everything else has been worked out and designed on Zoom and um, it has been challenging but a really exciting process because people had set up their own boards as to what they wanted to see. Uh, people had very clear ideas of ways in which they would envision the space being used um, and so we worked towards this really sort of warm space that is somewhat um, design, but also a lot is left open-ended to see how the L how LP will uh, insert itself and how it will evolve over the years. So the idea of flexibility, which um, these moving animated drawings show is very much a part of, of the design of this project. Thank you. Thank you, Nandini, so much. Um, and it's been such a treat and an honor to be working with you on this project. Um, and so that's that's some quick overviews uh, of the space itself. Uh, I hope you are as excited as we are uh, to gather, make, build with the community, and create change in our new home. And now I'm going to turn it over to Siabel Shinkopinkal, who is our community engagement manager here at the LP. And she'll share a bit more about the community engagement efforts uh, as we call Betsai our home. Hi everyone, I'm super thrilled. And thank you, Nandini, for jumping on this call. Um, I get really nostalgic just looking at the blueprints. I really miss being in community with uh, with folks and workshopping and, and uh, having programming. But I'm really excited. I see some a lot of people on this call that we've spoken to in the past. And um, yeah, we're super excited. Although, you know, we have a new storefront space. Um, LP's presence in bed in Central Brooklyn is not new. LP was actually founded in bed uh, 15 years ago by uh, Risa Wilson. Um, and so throughout these past 15 years, um, we've been building community and building relationships with folks on the ground, both through artists, neighbors, um, uh, family, and just LP friends. Um, over Throughout this time, we've had uh, 16 residency projects, uh, more than five field day annual festivals, um, and more than 30 plus community partners, um, being all uh, community gardens, uh, other cultural orgs, uh, small businesses, other storefronts. Um, and what we're seeing on the slide are uh, people hugging in front of um, a uh, art installation for our past field day, um, and people making art in front of Marmy Laundromat. Um, and uh, this kind of sums up our relationship with bed -Stuy. We've had uh, many projects within the space and we're super thrilled to be reconnecting and rekindling um, all of those past relationships and friendships that we've had on the ground. Um, and so I'm also gonna turn it over to our uh, Community Engagement Fellow, Erica Rawls, who will be speaking a little bit more about what we've been doing on the ground um, as of last year. Thank you, Siobel. Um, so on this slide, there's an illustration of a stoop with folks gathering and hanging out and a list of organizations that we've spoken to so far during our listening tour. Um, it's organized by the hyperlocal, citywide, and countrywide. 
um, and also notes that we've spoken to local artists, current and former residents, and Create Change alum as well. So the LP began a citywide listening tour in 2019 that has gotten more and more hyper-local over time. We've been thrilled to connect with bed residents, local artists, cultural and community institutions, collectives and small businesses, as well as some national community arts organizations that are doing similar work across the country. And the listening tour has been a way for us to be in conversation with folks in bed and really think about how we're being intentional about the ways in which we engage community, collaborate with our neighbors and complement bed ecosystem of arts, culture and civic engagement. So during these conversations, we've been asking questions like how can we be good neighbors? What are ongoing local initiatives, issues or challenges? How are people collaborating? How might we be best, how might we best support artists? Where does community and culture show up in the neighborhood? Um, so what we're learning from these ongoing conversations will guide the focus of our future collaborations, partnerships and programming. And I will pass it on to Lady Sasha Jones, our artist engagement manager, who will share more about the programming for the space. Thanks so much, Erica. Um, hello, everyone. <clears throat> My name is Lady Sasha Jones, and I'm the artist engagement manager here at the LP. I'm excited to share with you all some of our dreams and plans for the storefront space. Uh, to begin, I would like to describe some of the graphics and text that are featured on this first slide. Uh, there's a teal color rectangle that reads new home in the top left corner. Underneath it is the section header, new hub programming. In the same graphic of our storefront uh, that was described earlier, it's positioned to the right of the slide with our logo directly below it. In exploring the future of the LP through this move to bed sty we have been considering the opportunities it offers um, for the growth of our flagship Create Change residency and fellowship programs alongside our engagement with our artist community. Uh, the opportunity to redefine the role of public programming for the org and the opportunity to strengthen our practice as a community-based arts organization that deeply values place, local histories, and people power. Being in place in this way uh, enables us to deepen what it means to be hyper-local in our approach towards building cooperative partnerships and investing in leadership development through art and culture with artists and community members alike. As a staff, we have been discussing <laughs> uh, for some time now, um, anchoring our fellowship program within our new spatial context uh, alongside developing a new residency for local artists to create community programming and art activations from the storefront itself. We're also evaluating the role of virtual programming for the org. And when we are able to gather again in space, uh, we are considering programmatic formats that are at the intersection of our civic engagement and that can add to the already rich cultural landscape of the neighborhood. Uh, next slide, Aisha. So now this slide uh, features the section header, our dreams for the space. And there's a series of four quote blocks positioned across the page that I will read uh, momentarily in filling the bottom of the slide is the graphic of our storefront space and the LP logo is positioned in the top right corner. So as we continue uh, to plan for activating our storefront, um, we have been inviting our close community members to dream with us and to share their own reflections um, for the future of the LP and bed -Stye, and more specifically how our space can be a resource for artists and local community members. Um, so the first quote I'll read is from one of our alums, Shawnee Peters, um, who imagines our storefront as a space to gather, a space to create, and a space to heal and recharge, end quote. Our board chair, George Suttles, writes, I hope the LP in coming home is able to become an integral part of, the all, of an already vibrant, diverse community. The LP has resources and a desire to be of service to its neighbors, then I know we will come to our new home with that mindset, end quote. Rasu Jelani offers, as a bed -Stuy resident, LP member, and Create Change residency alum, I can't wait to see the LP set down roots in bed -Stuy. I think deepening pre-existing relationships here and having a space for community to gather will be really meaningful to both the org and the neighborhood, end quote. And finally, uh, alum Latasha in Nevada Diggs shared the following declaration. Um, Let it be a space to create, have serious discussions, tell jokes and have fun. Let it be a space that can balance the heavy with the light. End quote, I really love that one. 
Mm -hmm. uh, these are just a handful of all the dreams and imaginings we are holding for this momentous move. And we invite you all to contribute to our vision mapping uh, for this space as well. Uh, next, you will hear from our development manager, Amelia Broad, on how you can stay involved. Thank you. Thanks, Lady Sasha, and hi, everybody. Um, I will, I'm going to be talking a little bit about how you can stay involved, um, and I will describe this slide very quickly. So um, on the right, we have the same graphic of our new storefront space that was described at the beginning. Um, and then I will walk you through the text that's currently on the slide. Um, so today is a very exciting day for the LP, both because we're talking to you about our new home, but also because it's the first day of our 10 day people power challenge, which is, I'm gonna drop the link to it into the chat. Mm -hmm. It is, uh, a 10 day challenge to raise 40K to support our new home. So I invite you um, to uh, both donate or sign up to be people movers or to amplify the campaign. Um, and uh, Aisha has just switched to the graphic for the people power challenge, uh, which is a brightly colored graphic um, that has uh, an image of uh, a group of our alums uh, looking very happy and um, smiling in the right hand corner um, and it says be part of the LP's future raising 40k as a community from October 5th to 14th. Um, it's also a very currently a very busy time at the LP because we also have our open call for our um, create change um, program so I'm dropping the link to that also into the chat. Um, please help spread the word and send to any artists who are interested in working with community who you might know. Um, and then finally, I'm also going to drop the contact information um, for CFL, our community engagement manager, if you'd like to be part of the listening tour, and also an e a general email if you have any general questions. Um, thank you. And I believe I'm passing it back to Kimmy. Yes, thank you so much. As you can see, everyone, it takes uh, a village. Um, teamwork makes the dream work and I'm really uh, blessed uh, to have such an incredible uh, team of humans uh, to work with uh, as the LP staff. And of course we have, uh, as you might imagine, a really uh, generous, supportive and visionary board um, that has allowed us also to get to this incredible moment 15 years into our history. Um, so before uh, saying a final thank you and inviting uh, questions and answers, I'd like to um, actually ask George, our board chair, uh, to say just a few uh, words. Um, he has been an incredible um, partner and in working in lineage with other board chairs that have helped uh, get us to this moment. So George. Uh, thanks, Kemi. Yeah, I, I don't want to take up too much time. Um, first and foremost, I'm just, uh, I come into this virtual space uh, just filled with, uh, with gratitude and excitement. Um, you know, uh, us coming back home to bed Brooklyn is something that's been in the works for, you know, for a couple of years now. Um, and when it's safe for all of us to gather again, um, we, we're just anticipating the opportunity uh, to be um, in, 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 in physical and actual community with all of you. Um, so I just want to say thanks to all of you for taking, the for, for taking the time to be with us today for our virtual open house. I'm incredibly grateful to uh, the staff, my fellow board members, and just everyone who has been involved in this homecoming process. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you. And uh, we look forward um, to continuing to be in community with all of you. So thanks, Kemi, for giving me this opportunity to say thanks. Thank you, George. Um, I really could not have done it without you and each of our uh, current board members who are incredible as well as uh, the many board members um, who have been part of this journey for 15 years. And just to reiterate that, of course, Risa Wilson, uh, the laundromat project was her dream starting in the 
late 90s that was incorporated in 2005. And that's what uh, leads us to this very moment. And incredible former staff members, some of whom are on this call. I saw Kiva, um, for instance, uh, is on this call sort of a week after I did. Um, so it's, it really, really, really is um, community work uh, just to get to this moment. And could not be more grateful for every single one of you on this, uh, this Zoom. Each and every one of you has played a part um, including today being here to celebrate with us and to lean into joy in a particularly challenging time for humanity um, and being able to be this green shoot of hope and generation and joy and building something um, in this moment just feels like um, a privilege and a joy. Uh, so I really want to say a deep deep thank you to each and every one of you and all the multiple roles that you've played. Many of you have played multiple roles uh, as supporters and, and create change artists and donors and volunteers and, and amplifiers and, and just uh, LP fam. LP fam, all of you. So thank you so much um, for all the congratulations. Um, Lacante, I see you and so many folks. Um, it really has been a journey. We are starting uh, the construction process. I'm so happy Nandini was able to share some of that with you live. Um, and when it is safe to do so, we can't wait to have you in this space with us um, in physical form. Uh, in the meantime, we are on Instagram, our website is active, we're on Facebook and Twitter, and we are remaining in community and we have reached out to many of you to talk and to hear what you dream for us and continue to invite you um, to keep sharing that with us. We see this very much as a uh, polyphonic uh, dream, many of many different voices, not just our own. Um, so we really, really um, invite you to keep in conversation with us. And right now, invite you to share any questions you might have. So this uh, is the end of the formal part. I know uh, it's Monday afternoon and lunchtime. So if you need to um, dip out, totally understand. And thank you for joining us. And if you have questions, we invite you to hang out with us for a few minutes and ask them. Um, myself, board members, staff members, et cetera, are here and, and ready to jump in with any questions you might have. And I think we actually have a question from Ryan. Hi, Ryan. Um, the question is, uh, Ryan would love to hear a little bit more about the kinds of gatherings we imagine in this space uh, when we are able to complete prep and, and also wants to know how many people we can host in the space when gathering is possible. So it's perfect we have Nandini on this call um, <laughs> to share a bit more about that. And maybe um, we can throw it to someone from programs to share a little bit more about gatherings in the space. We also have our director of programs, Atwe Ramos um, in the call with us as well, or in the Zoom room with us as well. So um, I'll throw it out there for anyone programs or Kemi. I had to share more about gathering and then also uh, capacity for hosting. Atwe, do you want to take that? Sure, and I think, well, and then Nandini can, uh, knows more about the other things. So <laughs> thanks for uh, joining us today. I'm very excited to be here and see so many familiar faces and new faces too. So uh, great to connect again. I'm Atwe, I'm Director of Programs here at the LP, also an alum from uh, Artists in Residence back in 2012. So. Great to continue to be in this journey. So um, let's see. So right now we're going, as, as you heard, we're going through a listening tour uh, with different uh, stakeholders in the community. So we're assessing right now what are the best ways for us to engage uh, in, in the space while we're still in this moment. And, and there's a couple of things that we're thinking about um, from activating public spaces, not inside the space per se yet, uh, of course, uh, from activating public spaces around the community, uh, from also activating the window space that we have at the moment, the storefront uh, with artist commissions. Um, so, and then we're, we're also trying to uh, figure out some of the ways that we can uh, partner with other organizations so we're able to uh, be present at their events and things like that. So right now we're still in this, you know, assessing moment, but that's some of the quick ideas that we are uh, exploring at the moment. 
I hope that answers. It's not an answer exactly, but you know. <laughs> so yeah, um, the the main floor is divided into three kinds of spaces. The first is a reception area, which also has is going to have like a place to read and a little mini library and a reception area where let's see if it comfortably have. I'd say 10 people um, just in an informal setting. And then the center space is the programming area. And that could accommodate about 25 people in a sort of um, lecture seating. We have, so everything about this, the way it's been designed is very much things move on wheels and they fold away and there's chairs that are hung on the wall. You can hang your coats up. So there's a lot of um, details that allow us to sort of change and move the space to make it more or less um, usable. So the middle area could be used for workshops or you know some sort of dance class or yoga and whatever the programming um, allow you know wants for to happen in the center and the last room is really a work room it's for the lp staff and this is what they're so excited about being in the same space where the program is ongoing it, previously they were uh in their own offices up somewhere um and then they had all these other spaces that 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 uh the community was using so it's really to try and bring these two elements together um, there's also a lot of built-in storage since they have a lot of supplies that they use in their uh, projects with, uh, with the community and there's a wide sidewalk so there'll also be some ways in which they're going to occupy that with some of the mobile uh, units that go in and out of the space. So it's mainly this floor, the lower floor is not wheelchair accessible so it's a flex space and has like other kinds of purposes built into it such as conference room meeting area storage etc wanted to make sure folks could visually see um, what Nandini was referencing. Uh, so thank you, Nandini, for that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pull another question, and this is a, a kind of combo-related question, but I think um, all interrelated. Uh, so there's a question about uh, sharing a bit more about what listening tour is, um, and combining that with, uh, and that's a question from Rakia. Uh, and combining that with a question from Delasia, hi Delasia, um, about what community support does the LP look forward to making available as it as to the local bedside community as experiences a huge wave of displacement and potential future waves uh, of displacement of long-term Black residents. So great question and and full question. So um, I think as uh, addressing it as much as possible within the time frame we have here, but always a continued conversation, uh, an ever continuing conversation. But I, I can throw that question to, again, Programs and Kemi. Uh, yeah, I'm happy to jump in and, and uh, Programs can talk a little bit about the listening tour. Um, but thank you, uh, Delasia. That's definitely something that is very deeply on our heart and our minds um, as, as humans. And as uh, people of color and uh, many black staff members as well. Um, and it is the heart of why we are listening and why uh, we actually feel it is uh, important to be in Bed Stuy and really um, uh, to be in community with folks, right? And asking what is needed. And I know we've uh, met with you as well as many other folks. Some of that might be space, some of that might be connections, some of that might be uh, uh, being able to hire and pay people in the community and that's something in so many ways that the LP is really always centered is paying people for their time and their expertise and recognizing them for that. Um, and, and also asking what are the other ways uh, that we can show up and 
how do we, some of that might be showing up for uh, everything from petitions to, to protests to other ways of being in space and in community with folks. And um, the central idea for us uh, when thinking about issues of displacement and thinking about issues of gentrification is how to follow um, the leadership and the concerns of the people who are most affected. How do we in our program and these are questions we're, we're asking ourselves and continue to put front and center is we care about folks of color, uh, black folks uh, specifically in a neighborhood uh, as such as Bed-Stuy, um, people on, on low and modest incomes. So how do we center uh, those folks? How do we start conversations that say if these folks are, are feeling like uh, they are taken care of and heard, um, how does that inform our work? And, and what would we need to do differently or continue doing? So for us, it's so much about how do we remain accountable and in conversation? And it's why we've leaned so heavily um, into listening, which has always been part of our culture, but just knowing that returning to bed -Stuy in this moment, which is very different than the bed -Stuy of 2005, and very different from the bed -Stuy of 1998 or 1999. Um, how do we show up in a way that feels um, uh, responsible, accountable, and caring? So for us, it's very much about continuing to ask those questions and then continuing to make our resources, which vary, um, again, from space to other things um, available uh, to folks and inviting each of you to help us remain accountable, right? It is a reciprocal um, pr uh, process. Um, and that's why we've reached out to so many folks, not just here, but in other uh, places um, to continue. It's very much always learning in real time and oftentimes learning in public. Um, does uh, CFO, would you like to join in a little bit and just uh, talk about uh, the listening to, and I know issues of gentrification and displacement have been really central to a lot of what people have been raising as a real concern. For sure, yeah, thank you, Kemi. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, there's no way for us to enter this neighborhood without acknowledging that as an institution, as an entity, um, regardless of Bedsa or not, just being in the city. Um, but uh, we also know that this is not new work. Um, we had a beautiful partnership model at Kelly Street in the South Bronx um, with a housing advocacy entity for the past five years um, with the Banana Kelly Community Improvement Association. And we really um, plan to lean into this partnership model and what does, exploring what does this look like for bed -Stuy. Uh, specifically tapping in and working in with Brooklyn Movement Center and uh, Brooklyn Impact um, to really partner with folks that, that do this kind of work and what does it mean for us to kind of join forces the same way that we were doing back at Kelly Street. Um, and this all goes back to the listening tour, right, of coming in with an informed sense of what the feel of the neighborhood is, specifically speaking with um, residents, both artists and uh, folks that are doing work on the ground. Um, another model that we tested at, at Kelly Street and that we really liked, and I think uh, some of the CLC folk are on this call, um, but what does it also mean to create like uh, leadership coalitions of residents and artists that actually live within the neighborhood? Um, what does it mean to hold space for people to, um, to use our, our space and to, to use some of our funds and to use some of our programming to actually um, direct and lead their own neighborhood initiatives, right? What, is it, what, is, what does it look like for us to provide that kind of space? Um, and so we, we plan to pull in all of the, the things that we learned back at Kelly Street and the models and the ways of working with people um, to really center those experiences first and foremost as we're, we're building within the neighborhood and we're getting to know the neighborhood um, and knowing truly that this is extremely important for us and extremely important in the work that we're trying to do um, and build with folks. Um, but thank you for uh, highlighting that, Delasia. Um, I think that was a really important uh, question for, for you to raise to all of us. And I think we are at a little over um, our half an hour allotted in some questions, unless there's any burning, pressing questions for us in the immediate time or moment while we have all of you um, on the call. Go ahead and, and wrap everyone up and let them go about their day holding on to uh, the reality that this is a space um, that will be our home and your home. Uh, we will be able to gather and build and, and connect and learn and grow um, and all those beautiful generative things. Um, 
As mentioned, uh, just a couple of uh, housekeeping notes, our People Power Challenge campaign starts today, uh, we're raising support for the space itself, uh, as well as our Create Change Open Call, uh, which ends on October 18th. Uh, we're recruiting individuals to come in and take part in our flagship Create Change program. Uh, gosh, so many things that we have going on right now. I think those are the two key things um, at the moment that I can think of, unless anybody else, uh, if I've forgotten anything, please jump in and, and, and mention. Um, if you want to connect around the listening tour, uh, maybe we'll have CFL drop her email into the chat also. Uh, please feel free to reach out to CFL uh, and the listening tour uh, team. Uh, for more information. Um, if you want to share comments, hopes, dreams, wishes for the LP, uh, things that you want to bring to our attention, uh, we have the comment box, which is on our uh, LP Home bedside webpage. If I can ask somebody to drop that link into the chat, many, many different ways to reach us and contact us um, in this virtual space. We are here. We want to hear from you. We want to learn from you. Um, and so with all those housekeeping notes, I'm going to turn it to Kemi. Thanks, Shimon. Yes. Um, so again, thank you, Aisha. Um, and thank you to the team. Thank you to our board. Thank you to each of you. Um, once again, uh, Tony Morrison uh, reminds us that if we cannot imagine it, we cannot have it. And we want to have joy. We want to have love. We want to have a space for imagination and for making art and building community and creating the change that we want, uh, the building of the world that we deserve, um, all of us. Um, and that's really at the heart. Love is at the heart of the work that we do at the Laundromat Project. Our, uh, grounding principle and values that we are propelled by love as a radical act. Um, Bell Hooks reminds that is an action, it is not just a word. Um, and we, uh, we stand on the shoulders of so many and so many dreams. Um, and that is what uh, certainly keeps me going and keeps me uh, waking up and fighting for spaces where we can be our whole selves. And we hope that this space that we are building and creating and so many folks involved, thank you Nandini, um, who I met 15 years ago building an entirely different kind of space uh, or 20 years ago in Minneapolis. And here we are now working together. Um, you know, love and connections and relationships matter so deeply. And I feel like life continues to teach that lesson and I happily receive it. Um, and once LP fam, always LP fam. And each of you, thank you for being part of our family. And we cannot wait to welcome you um, to our new space. So good night or good day. Enjoy the rest of the afternoon and all the things. Yay. I feel like I'm at Disney World. <laughs> <laughs>